Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm like, I'm everybody. Um, I think I know most of you who are in here, but for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Sana Raza Hussein. Um, and welcome to today's reflection. Um, full disclosure, this is my first time doing this. So bear with me and please forgive me if I make any mistakes. And this may not look like a traditional Friday reflection, just throwing that out there before I start. Um, and also thanks to Osama for making me do this. <laughs> um, so as I was brainstorming over the weekend on what to talk about today, I realized that this is the Friday right before Eid. <laughs> um, so realizing this, um, it seemed kind of like tone deaf of me to not pick a topic that was related to Eid in some way. Um, in all honesty, I am nowhere near knowledgeable enough on our beloved religion to provide you with any earth shattering takeaways on this blessed month, month of Dhul Hijjah and Eid. Um, there are plenty of scholars and resources out there who would do a much better job of that. Um, actually, Omar Suleiman has a really great series out right now in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that I definitely want to watch. <laughs> um, but in thinking about Eid and its significance, um, one really obvious concept stood out to me, this idea of sacrifice. Um, now, you don't really need me to explain to you how sacrifice applies to the story of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and the significance of Eid. Um, but I really wanted to discuss this concept of sacrifice in a present day context. In today's culture and society, the idea of sacrifice is unsettling for many. In America especially, there's this culture of individualism, this I can do whatever I want, even if it harms others mentality. Even if we are strong in our faith, it can be hard to hide from the influences of the society we're living in. We may see others living life in a carefree way, focused on the benefits of this life without considering what's next. This can be especially hard during Ramadan. We live in a society where many people who are surrounded by at work or at school or anywhere else um, don't really understand what our schedules like or are like during Ramadan. It can be like really isolating. Life moves on as if nothing important is happening. While we recognize the blessings Ramadan brings to us, it can be really difficult to make all the sacrifice we make during this month while surrounded by others who carry on as normal. The point I'm trying to make is that we live in a culture of complete independence and anti-sacrificial attitude as we've seen this past year during the pandemic. So living in a society where sacrifice is seen negatively, how do we carry out the sacrifices we make from an intentional, spiritually connected and faith-driven mindset? Further complicating this idea of sacrifice is the way we were taught Islam. My generation and generations before us were often taught Islam from a fear-based perspective. Generally speaking, in talking with other Muslims my age or older, I can confidently make the assertion that many of us weren't taught religion from an open and loving perspective. Many of us were taught Islam as a list of do's and don'ts without any context or explanation or any emphasis on niyat or intention. And I still see a lot of this today. So, how does this relate to sacrifice? I think what I've come to realize is that true sacrifice cannot exist without other elements. We've been taught to sacrifice our time, our money, and several other things without any context as to what these sacrifices truly mean. What is sacrifice without intention, without connection, without faith? Specifically, I wanna talk about how to strengthen our willingness to sacrifice by strengthening our connection to the divine and reflecting on our faith journey. I'm sure a lot of you know how much I love the book Secrets of Divine Love. I'm like a broken record talking about this book. I actually have it with me right now. Um, yeah, so if you haven't heard me talk about it yet, I'd be very surprised. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I'd highly recommend it. This book is a comprehensive guide to accessing the spiritual dimensions of Islam, utilizing a positive, uplifting, and loving lens. When I began this book, I'll admit I was in a really weak, weak place in my spiritual journey. 
I was going through the motions of fasting during Ramadan, but really feeling empty inside, to be honest. Not understanding the significance of wudu, praying sporadically only when it was convenient or only when I needed something. Now you're probably wondering if you should even be listening to me today, but I truly have changed, I promise. Um, and that change truly was sparked by this book. Um, what struck me in particular was the way she talked about God's love for us. There are a couple of quotes she included in here that highlight the, the depth of that love. Take one step, tw step toward me, I will take 10 steps toward you. Walk toward me, I will run toward you. Whereas we break our promises a thousand times, God is always faithful. In talking about God's love for us, she also highlights God's perfect abilities to be merciful and just. In this way, we can think of God as this perfect parental figure, providing us with abundant love, never-ending forgiveness, and guidelines and boundaries to abide by for our own protection. What's beautiful about our relationship with God is the reliable safety and connection we can always receive from him, no matter how many times we mess up. Now take this conceptualization of God and our relationship to him and apply it in times of sacrifice. What's stopping us from sacrificing our time for prayer, money for zakat, and other things in the name of God's love and mercy? In the context of all that God provides for us, the sacrifices requir required of us are small in comparison. Another thing I find incredibly important for strengthening our intention and willingness to sacrifice is reflecting on our faith journey. From a mental health perspective, making sense of the story of our lives can result in improved emotional and mental health, increased attachment security, which I'll talk a little bit about later, and bilateral integration between the hemispheres of our brains, which is critical to well being. Take this concept, review the story of your life and highlight the elements of faith that emerge. Were there mo moments of hardship? I think most of us can answer an unequivocal yes to that question. What did you do in those moments of hardship? Were there times where things didn't go your way or what you thought was your way? What happened instead? How have the events of your life contributed to your overall faith journey? Looking back on things now, were there times you felt like you were guided in a different direction for the better? What moments stand out to you as times you felt most connected to the divine? Reflecting on these questions can help us make sense of our faith story and therefore strengthen our Iman and our connection to God. And by strengthening our Iman, we end up being more willing to make sacrifices. Tying these two ideas together is the concept of attachment. Last month, I wrote a blog entry on Muslim Spaces website titled God as an attachment figure. If you aren't familiar with attachment science, I'd highly recommend reading about it. It was first developed by John Bowlby, and it's based on the idea that in order for infants to grow and thrive into well-adjusted adults, they need experience with sensitive, emotionally attuned, and reliable caregivers. Attachment can be either secure or insecure. Secure attachment means we have a positive view of ourselves and others, and we generally believe the world is a safe place. Insecure attachment means we are wary of the world, of ourselves, and of others. Insecure attachment can lead to a variety of interpersonal and individual issues. Today, scientific research confirms attachment theory from a neurobiological perspective. Having secure attachments with our caregivers actually alters our brain chemistry. Now, you may be wondering what this has to do with God. Interestingly, researchers have been applying this concept of attachment to our relationship with God. An attachment figure is someone we can turn to in times of distress, someone we know will always be there no matter how many mistakes we made. Does this figure sound familiar? Ideally, God is a type of attachment figure for us. We turn to him in moments of gratitude and in moments of hardship. We ask for forgiveness when we've made mistakes knowing that he will always forgive us. In having this kind of relationship with God, we strengthen our bond with him. Furthermore, science has shown us that developing a coherent life story, making sense of our lives, 
can lead to a higher attachment security, leading to a well-balanced emotional and mental life. Putting all these elements together, connection, attachment, our life narrative, gives us what we need in order to make sacrifices with pure intention and unwavering faith. So what actions can we take to strengthen our connection to God? One activity the author of Secrets of Divine Love recommends doing is a mindfulness meditation, but focusing on God in these moments. You'll, you can begin by taking a few deep breaths. And as you keep breathing, you start to say the word Allah. As you inhale, saying Al, and as you exhale, saying La. She recommends trying to do this for three to five minutes a day and take note of how you feel afterwards. It can be a really great activity to just like stop, pause throughout your day and just really like remember God um, in these moments. And of course, there are several other things we can do in our everyday lives that are embedded within Islam. Prayer and dhikr being two examples. Next time you engage in either of these activities, however, envision this as your time to directly talk with God. I know it sounds simple, but when I truly visualize this, I begin to understand the importance of wudu and of prayer and of remembrance. When you engage in wudu, you're fulfilling a duty to present yourself to God in a pure state. How beautiful is that? We get so wrapped up in these activities that we don't even think twice about their beauty. I encourage you to be mindful and reflect inwardly as you engage in these activities. What about strengthening your faith? As I mentioned before, reflecting on questions that help you make sense of your experiences from a faith-based perspective can help you see the journey you've been on and all the times God intervened to lead you down where you were meant to go. I've personally done this and truly believe that the peaks and valleys of my life were all the beautiful work of God, subhanAllah. Think about what has led you to your life today and how God has played a role. Think about your successes. Who is to thank for those? And in times of hardship, who gave you the strength to make it through? As mentioned in the Quran, God does not burden a soul beyond that it can bear. <clears throat> Before I end my reflection today, I want to leave you with another quote from Secrets of Divine Love. It is only from a place of humility that we can begin to experience a connection with God. In a world full of distractions, it's easy to forget the one who is responsible for all of our blessings. Whatever your dreams and goals are, remember who is making those come true. Whatever difficulties you overcome, Remember who is getting you through it. And one more thing I want to leave you with before I end today is that sometimes it's hard for me to give these like blanket suggestions to people because I know all of us are going through different hardships. And at times it can be really, really hard to take this advice and move forward because we have so much other internal mental noise going on. So I wanted to say that what really matters is that you're trying and it's okay if you don't get it perfect the right the first time. Um, and yeah, from a mental health pers perspective, just taking care of yourself above all else will allow you to do all of the things that you wanna do in life. <laughs>